So it's times like these where I'm thinking like, you know, I've got this lexicon that does awesome tape delays. That guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got these guys too, but that guy. And the blue. Why, 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 why would I do this? For the love of tape, man. For the love of tape. out the tape just cracked open the case got to keep the cats out of the tape before I start winding it I already made uh, I found their original splice it's, uh, eight tracks are wound continuously so I cut right there their splice I'll remove that splice and be replacing it line on and um, figure out how many feet of tape I want to put in here. A uh, rough estimate before was around the living room, around the studio, down the hall, and back. So, a lot of tape. This one seemed like it was wound a little tight, which might have been the issue, so I'll probably go with a little less tape, see how that works out for me. Alright, so what I'm going to do is take the gaff tape here, using gaff tape because it's a little stick, won't leave a residue, don't want to mess up my turntable, or the spools. I'm going to put the tape on the spools while they're still in the cartridge, then I'll just flip the cartridge over, kind of stick them there, that way they'll be about evenly spaced, and um, the right distance apart, which is most important, is the distance is right so that uh, when you're coiling this it works out right. If you squeeze just a little bit too tight, It'll be really hard to get on there, and it'll probably bind, and then you'll be in trouble. If you uh, go too loose, then you can get a wrinkle or something in there, then also bind, and then you're in trouble again. So you got to get these um, pretty close to right when you're having to reload them like this. All right. So, yeah, I should put this, lift this off. And when I'm done, hopefully I can put it back on the same way and make things real simple. Next up, spooling the tape. Okay, so a couple things to be mindful of. Uh, first, be mindful of the direction. Um, with tape like this, you're generally looking at the brown side, dull brown, heading towards the tape head. Sometimes there's a shiny side. This one is dull both sides, but it's got a charcoal side and a brown side. So brown side is the tape head. Uh, it's Ampex 8-track tape, 301, I believe. And then um, leave enough feed here that you can make it easy to insert it back through this because you're going to need to, the one that folds back through. So remember, it's got to feed in this way uh, clockwise and feed out the bottom of this reel. So in this reel, bottom out that reel. And then if you start off that way and wind correctly, everything should pop into place. So be sure that you're running the proper direction, spools are in, in the right direction. So this, let's come down here, around the spool this way, and now it's this spool and back. And then this is gonna feed out the bottom and just have to stick it through through that slot down there and it's going to feed diagonally back and we'll complete our loop okay so threaded through to splice in the splicing block a little patience to get it just right there's the tape and the splice again uh, look at that pretty nice almost invisible there it is So, pretty good, getting better at the splicing thing. 
imagine somebody that uh, worked in radio back in the day, doing hundreds of these a day. Okay, I've wound down a little bit of tension. So you get it pretty close, and then um, any looseness that's in there, if it's just uh, you know a few inches, you get absorbed into the reel. It's no problem. So get a little bit of source sound. With an acid sound feeding it right now. That's what happens here. You hear those tubes getting warmed up? Turn up. Eight track tape sounds good to me.